Hi team, uh, hope you are doing well. Um, today we will be talking about how to enable Azure to Azure replication with the help of Azure Site Recovery. So let me share my screen so that I can explain you the scenario very well. Um, let's say that I have a virtual machine uh, running in the east west location. <clears throat> okay, this is the location of my virtual machine and uh, it's running in the Azure this is my VM. I'm going to call this as a source VM. This is my virtual machine name. And um, I have a RSV created recovery service vault created in a central India location. And what I want to do is I wanted to enable replication to West US location. Okay. So this is my target location wherein my virtual machine is going to be uh, replicated and failover to west to west location when I initiate a failover from Azure end. So failover initiated when the primary region is down. So in this lab exercise, we will uh, uh, we will uh, say that we'll, we will assume that the east to west location is down and we go to RSV and initiate a failover so that, you know, within a couple of minutes, there will be a virtual machine created in the target location right so as we discussed last time so there will be a disk associated with your virtual machine uh, one is the os disk if you have any additional data disk attached so you will see that under the source virtual machine so respected uh, replica disk will be created in the target if it is a os disk you will see os disk hyphen ASR replica. So there will be a replica disk that is getting created in the target location where the replication is going to be happen continuous. So how the replication is going to be happen? So we have something called multi-service agent that gets installed inside your virtual machine when you enable replication. So this uh, uh, this component of this service is basically going to perform a disk level uh, replication. It identify the changes that are happening on the disk and those changes will be uh, replicated to target location. Okay. All right, so so let me go back to Azure portal. Um, let me show you. I already have a source virtual machine running in the east west location. I've configured the replication as well. But let me first show you how to enable replication here. So if I go to recovery service world, this is the RSV I've created. And this is in a central India location. So you have two options here. One is backup and enable site recovery. Um, backup we discussed last time, which is used for business continuity solutions. Enable site recovery is for disaster recovery solution. So we are going to talk about enable site recovery. You can configure the replication from this blade as well. Otherwise, you can go to getting started here and you see a site recovery option. Click on site recovery and uh, ASR supports, I use site recovery supports, uh, different ways of uh, DR solution, I mean diff, uh, DR solution for different workloads. One is for the VMs which are running on Azure. The other one is for the VMs which are running on uh, VMware and the VMs which are running on Hyper-V. So, and there are VMs which are running with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, SAVMM, System Center Virtual Machine uh, uh, Manager, SAVMM, right? So, uh, we, it, it also supports the uh, virtual machine. Uh, it supports the physical servers that are running on on-premises. You can configure the migration for that server using the ASR. So, I'm going to configure the Azure virtual machine replication. Uh, you click on the enable replication job. So, basically, you have to specify your source. What is the source uh, location where your virtual machine is running? and the subscription. There could be a scenarios where you see multiple uh, subscription. It's always better to choose the right subscription to configure the DR. And uh, what is the source resource group? The source resource group is where you know you are going to choose your virtual machine. So let's uh, create a virtual machine for testing purpose. I think that's the easy way. Uh, I'm going to create a VM in uh, Kamal RG so that I can configure the replication. So let me quickly create one test machine. 
so the name i'm going to change here in our exercise we said it's a source vm source vm already configured the replication because when we enable replication it's going to take a lot of time to um, enable replication that's why i've uh, already configured it so let me choose existing resource group and i'm going to say um eus vm okay and uh, it's going to be windows server 22 l2 data center i'm going to give a general credentials that we use in our labs okay so i'm going to choose the default options here um it will be standard hdd and the networking i'm going to choose existing vnet and create the virtual machine Okay, so while virtual machine is getting created, let me go to RSV and I'll just explain you a couple of other options here. So you see essential bed uh, where you can see the basic properties of your virtual uh, I mean, recovery service world. Uh, what is the resource group and what is the location, subscription name and ID. And if you go to overview, you will see uh, two uh, sub blades here. One is for the backup, the other one is for the site recovery. This is the uh, quick navigation blade where you can navigate to the various uh, you know uh, components uh, which are available in the recovery service world you can go to backup dashboard backup items this for the backups and when it comes to the site recovery you can go to site recovery dashboard replicate items and recovery plans right so uh, you can navigate them from the from the left side uh, uh, in the scroll bar you can if you scroll down you see replicate items uh, that's one method to go and uh, the easiest way is to come here and to click on this replicate items okay so there is a backup dashboard where it will show you the backup jobs information and backup items information if you go to site recovery it will tell you how many servers are part of the replication uh, and uh, what is the state of them is it a critical or a healthy or warning so there are two missions which are in a warning state the reason because uh, i start those virtual machines um, so uh, the replication was not happening. So I started the VMs a couple of minutes ago. So now the replication is slowly starting. So that's why it is, uh, it came from critical to warning, slowly it will move to the healthy status. So this is the one of the infrastructure review, uh, which is really, really helpful. If you really wanted to understand the replication flow. So there are two virtual machines. Uh, they are in the primary side. The other one is the recovery side you see, okay? Always you see the site recovery or recovery service vault is in a diff, uh, different location than the primary location, okay? So the two virtual machines are configured for the replication here and uh, with the help of site recovery and with the help of site recovery, you are going to see the replica disk available in the target location. But there is something called cache storage account in the source location, okay, in the primary location. So this cache storage account is really helpful um because when the replication is happening just to avoid the um activities on the virtual machine disk so microsoft introduced this cache storage account in the cache storage account all the file validations are going to happen how much is the pending data and uh, how much, what are the new changes happened in the disk so those calculations and the checksums will be happened in the cache storage account so this is mandatory and it is always has to be in the um, uh, active location of your uh, replication. So let's say now the active location is primary, right? So the cache storage account has to be in a primary location. Let's say later you want to fail back from recovery to primary. So at that time you will have a storage account created in the secondary. Okay. So this is the easy method. And when you have VMware and Hyper-V sites configured, you will see the similar view. Uh, how the replication flow uh, is configured and where it is exactly blocked. Sometimes you see the replication is blocked here in the virtual machine to site recovery, sometimes from cache storage account to site recovery. So you will see the error messages or, you know, kind of information which says, you know, there is a communication issue between the cache storage account to ASR or your site recovery. Okay. Uh, and uh, let us take an example. Okay. You have multiple virtual machines let's say vm1 vm2 and vm3 um it there could be you know application servers and there will be a db server when you perform a failover right so you don't want uh, application server to be online quickly so you there is a process there is a flow that you follow in general 
to avoid any application corruption or DB corruptions. So what you do in, in such scenarios is you want you wanted to have a DB server to be created in the ASR or you no know, target location first. Then you wanted to have application one, application two. So there is an order, right? So there is an order where your virtual machines has to be powered off and has to be created in the target location, right? So this can be achieved uh, with the help of um, Azure recovery plans, right? If you go to site recovery, um, right? A recovery service world, there is something called recovery plans. You just need to click on recovery plan. Let's say that um, test or recovery plan, okay? And select with which is the source location, which is the target location. And the deployment model always will be a resource manager and select the source machine, click OK, create this. So once the recovery plan is created, you can mention, you know, you can create a groups. Group one will be, you know, let's say that your application DB server, group two will be your application server, right? So first uh, group one will be shut down and uh, then group two will be shut down. Group one uh, failover starts, group two failover start then group one VMs will be created in the target and group two VM will be created in the target. So that is the flow. So if you wanted to configure that, you just come here, click on customize this. You can create multiple groups. Right now only one group available. You can create another group and you can attach any other virtual machines if you have, right? You just need to click on add protected machines. Right now there are there's only one machine. That's why you are not able to see it here. Okay, so this will help when when you are uh, you know having a um, two layer three layer architecture, right? And uh, you don't need to go to replicate items to failover. You can just do a failover from here itself directly. Just click on failover. It will give you a recovery points and select the recovery points and initiate a failover. So you can see low RTPO, RTPO and low RPO or latest application consistency recovery point you can choose, right? And the failover directions from east to west to west to west, primary to the secondary, okay? And always the recommendation is to shut down the source machine uh, before you failover, just in case if there is any network uh, conflicts, right? Uh, if both servers are power on, so we can avoid such situation by shutting down the, uh, you know, uh, original machine or a source machine and and we go for this option for this option when there is a real disaster happens so we assume that the source machine is already down so uh, we are we will be good uh, to choose this option um, while performing the failover right so this is one method one way how we can do a failover and this is the most recommended method if you have a two uh, layer architecture or three layer architecture two tier or three tier architecture app and DB or web, web, web layers, right? So you can just choose this uh, groups and initiate a failover. So site recovery infrastructure, uh, you can see there are like for Azure virtual machine or VMware and physical machines and for system center VMM and Hyper-V virtual machines, okay? So these are the different workloads you have it. So you can see in the left side for Azure virtual machine, there are separate blades. For VMware and physical, you have separate blades. For system center, VMM separate blade and Hyper-V site also separate blade, okay? So <clears throat> since we're talking about the uh, Azure virtual machine, uh, we can just click on network mapping. So network mapping will help you in choosing the, what is the source VNet and target VNet. Okay, you can configure the network mapping well in advance so that ASR is going to use the same network uh, while uh, after the failover. So replication policies, basically the replication policy will let you know um, what is the retention of the recovery points. As I mentioned in the last session, it is a continuous replication, right? The continuous replication happens from source to the recovery region or a target region. So while it is continuous, there should be a point in time uh, snapshot we have to specify to um, perform a failover, right? So you can specify uh, how frequently you wanted to get a application consistency recovery point and uh, how long that recovery point has to be retained. So in since it is DR, so most of the customers prefer 24 hours, uh, maybe 48 hours sometimes, but yeah, it's not more than that. Uh, 72 hours is the maximum that we can provide. But, you know, um, 
uh, 24 hours is fine because you know uh, we will have a, if it is 72 hours we will have a long rpo values uh, which may not have a latest data okay so 24 hours should be fine and with this we can save uh, cost as well if you go for 72 hours you may have to pay for uh, you know the storage that is available in the target location okay so this is about the replicated uh, uh, items or replication policies. And uh, if I go to extension updates, as I've been saying that, you know, uh, Microsoft keep on fixing the bugs that are identified or, or you know, they usually provide uh, or add enhance the uh, site recovery experience, right? The DR experience by adding new capabilities and new features. So they keep on releasing the new version of the mobility service agent. And for us, you know, it's really difficult to manage or monitor when you have hundreds of servers. So with this Azure Site Recovery uh, extension update settings, you are going to uh, automate this process. So agent will be automatically updated, updated to the latest version uh, without your intervention. The only disadvantage with this is, you know, you're going to create a store, I mean, automation account. And let's say you have 10 virtual machines, you're going to get 10 automation accounts for this. If you have hundreds of uh, virtual machine, you're going to create hundreds of automation accounts. That's the only disadvantage we have with this, you know, uh, automatic updates. Otherwise we are good to go with this uh, option. Okay. So this is about Azure Site Recovery uh, for Azure Virtual Machines. Uh, let me go back to our scenario. And um, there are a um, few things you, uh, you need to look into it. Uh, one is for the manage section. Manage section contains the backup policies, backup infrastructure. This is for the backups. And site recovery infrastructure we just spoke and the backup reports for the backups, not for the site recovery. So you, if you want to check what's the status of the jobs, you can always go to site recovery jobs and start monitoring what's happening. So yesterday I've initiated a failover. You can see failover took just two minutes. Within two minutes in the target location, the VM was available. So all the jobs you can see, and you have filter option here. You can select, you know, what is the time span? Last 24 hours or last one hour, last 72 hours. It's up to us. Um, if you if you wanted to see when was the, you know, what was what happened in the last couple of days, what jobs were triggered, uh, you can just go to the custom range or you know specific time range to review what's happening over there right and you can also export this jobs to an excel sheet you just click on export jobs it's going to um, export the data to an excel sheet okay so um, it's saying do not close this okay i just downloaded and uh, let me open this excel file okay so it contains the multiple jobs and uh, each uh, job has a hyperlink if you click on this it's taking you to another uh, sheet here in the same excel file and you can see what is the start day start time and end time and duration or time it took and you can also see more information from here there are multiple jobs and you can also see everything from this blade itself. It also contains start time and end time and the job ID. Okay, so this will help you uh, in understanding what happened in the couple of days. So site recovery events will let you know if, uh, if there is an issue with the replication, right? Uh, you see there is a replication uh, status change to critical. The reason because the source machine was in power of state. You can see the um, error code, error ID, and error message. Uh, this will help you in uh, uh, isolating or you know, understanding the problem very clearly. If you read this message, it will give you more information. And there are like possible other causes uh, why, why this replication is uh, critical. Um, one issue could be uh, the application consistency recovery points are not generated and you can follow so on so steps to you know troubleshoot this and there is a link for troubleshooting as well uh, troubleshooting documentation so there are different causes that you can see here so just a minute 